What's up, guys? This is Taking the Field with Stevie Mac, a lacrosse talk podcast. Now, this episode is also going to air on DetroitTitans.com. And the reason because my guest today is the head coach for Detroit Mercy men's lacrosse, Chris Cullen. So, coach, thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Thanks for having me. So like I said off the air just a moment ago, we'll get into a lot of different things here on this episode. We'll talk about the schedule a little bit. We'll talk about some returning players, some a few new faces I've heard from this team this year. So we'll really dive into it. So to get started, talking about the schedule, there's seven road games on the schedule here in 2022. That's over 60% of the Titans schedule this season, um, including four straight on the road to start the year. How do you attack a schedule like that as a team with so much travel involved, especially that early part of the season? Well, uh, if you look at the quality of opponents in the uh, first part of the season, um, you you know, to get that quality of opponent, you got to go on the road. Um, You know, we could kind of mess around with people maybe at our level or, or, you know, the mid-major level or, or, you know, a lower level, but we're, we're not, we're going to go at the big boys early on. That's what we've always done. And to be honest with you, even though uh, our travel is at, you know, 60%, we're still mileage wise, you know, you know, significantly less with this new conference than we've ever been in the past. So, um, you know, most of the guys are used to it. Um, uh, you know, I think it also is a great opportunity uh, to see some, you know, uh, Michigan is away, but <laughs> is that really a way? Um, right. and, you know, they go play Notre Dame, Ohio State, um, and, you know, Marquette is a, a back and forth. Um, it's a great experience. So um, I, I think we're offering the best experience we can. Absolutely. So you touched on those matchups, those first four uh, matchups in the season, Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, Marquette, the other three road games this year at High Point, Bellarmine, and Utah Uh, to round out the season. Now you did mention in that first question, that new conference this year, it's the A-Sun Men's Lacrosse Conference. From what I understand, it's their second kind of attempt at men's lacrosse in that conference. So Detroit Mercy will now see Utah, Air Force, Bellarmine, uh, Robert Morris, and Cleveland State all in conference play starting this year. What can we expect from this new version of A-Sun Men's Lacrosse? And really, what does it mean for Detroit Mercy to be a part of it? Well, this year is a growth mindset and everything that we're doing by the strength of schedule, uh, being in a new conference, having a younger team, you know, we're really not concerned about outcomes as much right now. We're concerned about getting better and becoming a tougher, uh, more mighty uh, opponent in each, in each step and each day of practice. So I, I think that's what kind of this year is going to be all about the new conference and, and resetting ourselves, you know. Uh, getting back to high point, right? High point's probably our furthest game away. And that's still, you know, two hours closer than our old, you know, old friends at Siena. Uh, I think three hours less than Mar- uh, Maris by bus and uh, four hours less than uh, Quinnipiac. So uh, uh, while we're traveling, we're also con- consolidating into more of a Midwestern league, which we like. I think the game is expanding in general and, and there's great kids uh, you know, on the East Coast, but there's also now great kids in the Midwest and, and, and the West Coast. So, you know, I think we're part of expansion and we're part of growth. Uh, and that's kind of what we've always been about at Detroit. And we're just taking another step. We, you know, we did that in the MAC. I think in this new conference now, we're going to continue to expand our, our footprint and, and who we are with recruits and, and games and, and wins and losses. And um, it's just all about expansion and, and getting better. Absolutely. So now we've talked a bit about the schedule. We've talked about this new A-Sun Lacrosse Conference. Now let's talk about the roster a little bit and sort of the roster makeup of this team. I was told uh, just earlier today by PJ Grudowski, the SID for men's lacrosse at the University of Detroit Mercy. There are going to be a few new faces on the field this year on the offensive and defensive side. What can you tell us um, about some of these new players and how they really meshed with a lot of the returning guys this year? Well, um, I'm not going to be too specific. Uh, you know, surprise is a, is a good thing uh, coming up on Saturday. So we're going we're gonna <laughs> to keep as much surprise as we can. Um, I, I can tell you this, uh, you know, looking back, uh, there's probably, you know, we've got Brett Erskine and Paul uh, with really real game experience. And then we've got another tier of guys that maybe 
five that have maybe five games of experience during COVID, you know, because we had half of a season and half of a season. And then the rest of them have really no division one experience. So it's going to be a young team, probably the youngest team we've ever had. I, you know, I would have to ask PJ who would run the math on that. But even in year one, when we brought in a lot of transfers and stuff like that way, you know, 13, whatever, how long ago it was, uh, I think we were an older team than we are right now. Um, so uh, it's a young group and, and we're going to uh, play young early on and, and we're going to grow. And uh, it's a very talented group. And, and we hope that, you know, with experience and um, experience and experience and experience, we're going to keep, uh, you know, pounding the stone and get better. Now, you did mention in that last response, you mentioned Paul and you mentioned Erskine, both receiving ace on all conference preseason um, accolades. What have those two really meant to this program after, or excuse me, over the last several years that they've been around Detroit Mercy? Well, they're both generational players, right? They, I think, you know, uh, you know, you hope that it's like them, your coaching career, but I'm not sure if you, you do. And, and, you know, however long you stay at a program, but, you know, if I'm, uh, you know, Brett, when it comes to his leadership and, and just who he is as a person and as a player, uh, it's just been a joy, right? Uh, Brett's been uh, just amazing on every level, right? It, it, he's just so fun to watch. He's, he's uh, a class act. He, he has fun on the field. Uh, he has a great time off the field. He's, he's a great mentor and leader to kids. Uh, it's going to be, you know, we hope to find more of him, <laughs> you know, throughout the years, but he, he's one that I think is a, that it's going to be really hard to replace. And same thing with Paul, you know, Paul was a kid that was under recruited. We make a living on kids like Paul who, you know, kind of slipped through the crack, cracks at De La Salle. I had so many people telling me like, who is this kid? Why are you taking this kid? It's from De La Salle. They run the zone. You, know, you don't know anything. And to turn in the player that he did, I think he's a, you know, a PLL level, level player. Um, you know, he, he's done that with his hard work and, and he's just a brilliant kid in the classroom and a brilliant kid on the field and a great leader. Um, you know, we hope to find more of, of, of him, uh, but I think both of them are kind of uh, guys you only see once in your career because they do everything right. Absolutely. Now, final question here for you, Coach. I know you said previously you don't want to give too much away ahead of this game against the Ohio <laughs> State Buckeyes on uh, February 5th, but just what can you tell us specifically about that matchup and, and something that – either fans should be watching out for or just anything to look forward to, I think, from that matchup in particular as the, uh, as the season gets going here? Well, Ohio State's a class act. I mean, uh, going down there into the shot and scene center, I don't think they've ever lost a game in, in Ohio State history in that indoor facility. And, uh, you know, we hope to surprise them with some stuff. Uh, I think a great matchup at the faceoff uh, is going to be something that people need to watch. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting to watch our new defense as the game goes on, um, adjusting to them on offense with, with maybe a couple different looks. And, uh, you know, I would hope that um, in the end we can keep it very close and, and you know, maybe, uh, maybe squeak it out and, and surprise them. Uh, you know, time will tell. But I, I think it's going to be a close game. But I think really what's going to be the interesting – uh, matchup to watch uh, for every, you know for the for the <laughs> the guys that listen to your podcast and stuff like that is that face off matchup right the, to the real lacrosse enthusiast uh, watching how that those guys go back and forth we have two guys that are just really technicians and uh, you know Ohio State's always had a uh, you know we model our face off wings uh, off their face off wings and kind of how they approach the game. And, and we have some experience there and, and they're always great there. So I think it's just going to be a great technical battle uh, and, and great athletic battle between the, between the two programs. Yeah, this is definitely a game, especially early on in the season that I'll, I'll be excited to watch for. Definitely have to take some time on Saturday to check that game out over on a BTN plus at noon on Saturday, February 5th. Well, coach, thanks a lot for taking the time to sit down with me and, and talk this out heading into the 2022 season. That'll do it for this episode of Taking the Field with Stevie Mack, also airing on DetroitTitans.com. We've got another episode coming up on DetroitTitans.com a little bit later on, but as far as uh, me and coach go, we'll talk to you guys later.